Lately, one of the biggest problems that many Roblox players have with Roblox is that as it keeps growing, features keep disappearing. For example, seasonal and holiday events are long gone, statuses are a thing of the past, and more recently, custom audio is no more. But for the past three years, one of the most sorely missed removed Roblox features has been non-sponsored limiteds. If you're a newer player, the only new limited accessories you've seen have probably been sponsored by a company. They're usually available for purchase in sponsored events, and because the company wants as many sales as possible, the fact that they're going to be limited is advertised heavily, meaning that when they finally go limited, they've been purchased by hundreds of children who don't know how to manage limited, and usually end up instantly setting their average price at just a few hundred robux. Long story short, they're not very profitable. But things used to be different. In the old days, instead of promoting the heck out of every limited item that came along, Roblox would drop them out of nowhere. Sure, there were special sale events where new limiteds were pretty much guaranteed to be made, but there were also a ton of limited items that were released out of the blue. There were also several occasions where Roblox would turn particularly historically significant items into limiteds so that people could experience nostalgia and get a look back on key pieces of Roblox history. Regardless of item origin though, no one ever really knew what the next limited item on the catalog would be. The entire system was very exciting, and it was a key part of what made trading limited so fun. And if you've been paying attention to the catalog for the past couple of weeks, you may have noticed that that system seems to be starting to come back. On May 6th, 2022, out of absolutely nowhere, Roblox turned the hat Sinister S into a limited item. This is a hat that was released in 2010 for just 250 Robux, and it had no sponsor attached to it whatsoever, making it the first non-sponsored limited in three whole years. This alone was insane to almost everyone, but then, the next day, Roblox made it even more insane by turning Tentacles Jr., a hat from 2009, limited as well. A few days later, it was followed by the Poisoned Horns of the Toxic Wasteland, then three former promoters items that could have been won at Roblox's real-life Maker Faire events, then the Friday the 13th top hat, and in the middle of writing the script for this very video, the Happy Time Magic Flower Bowler, the Bombastic Sword Pack, and the Outrageous Builders Club Hard Hat. Some of these drops have been better received than others, but regardless, they all seem to indicate a brand new pattern of non-sponsored limited releases, which hopefully will be kept up for many years to come. By making these items limited, Roblox is calling attention to its history, boosting its economy, justifying the purchases that the original owners of these items made, and most most importantly, giving players some cool new options for items they can put on their avatars. Generally speaking, being made limited is one of the best things that can happen to a Roblox accessory, and it's no wonder that literally every trader is fiercely advocating for it to happen to their favorite hat. With all of these recent drops, lots of people are excited about the possibility that their hats of choice could be made limited. But there's one pretty important question that I've seen a lot less people asking. Should they become limited? I did just say that being made limited is generally one of the best things that can happen to a hat, but it's crucial to realize that not every hat is ready for it. Some hats, while historically significant, have so many owners that being made limited would instantly ruin their value. Some hats, while rarer than many of the limiteds already on the catalog, are arguably too new to be retired and made limited. There are many circumstances that make a hat an extremely good fit for limited status, and there are many circumstances that do the opposite. And I think we can all agree that while it's exciting that Roblox is finally making normal limiteds again, there are certain items that they've been passing over that would probably do significantly better than some of the items they have selected. There are certain items that really just deserve those limited spots more. So which items would really do well? Which Roblox items truly deserve to go limited? Let's find out. Now obviously, there's a ton of items out there that to some degree would do well as a limited item, but this video will focus on the top of the list, the ones that if Roblox were to make them limited, would skyrocket to the top of every trader's wishlist and be the talk of the community for weeks. To pinpoint what these items are, I decided to use the helpful acronym H-A-R-R-D, or HARD for short. H is for history. What have these items been through? How long have they been around for? What did you have to do to obtain them, or what was their original price? An item that people have been wanting to turn limited since 2013 probably deserves to go limited bit more than an item that came out in 2019. A is for appearance. Now while this isn't really a huge factor, it does bear a bit of weight here, because it doesn't matter how rare an item is. If it doesn't look appealing, people aren't going to want to own it as much, which can influence how much people sell and trade it for, and potentially destroy its trading value. Speaking of rarity, R is for rarity. This one's pretty obvious. The less owners an item has, the more it'll sell and trade for, and the more people will want it. There's a reason why Dominus Frigidus is worth a lot more than Dominus Empyreus, even though they both use the same mesh. R is also for recognizability. If a limited item uses a mesh and texture that other high-value limited items also use, it's more likely to be successful. 
This explains why the poisoned horns of the toxic wasteland, which have 1.5k trading owners, are already valued at 290k, while the maker fedora, which has 150 trading owners, remains unvalued with an average price of just 200k. Finally, D is for demand. How many people really want this item to go limited? No matter what those other statistics are like, community opinion comes first. If the community doesn't want an item to do well, it most likely will not do well. So, which items really exemplify the hard characteristics? Well, one of the items that comes to mind is the teapot hat. The history the history of this item is pretty cool. It was originally created all the way back in 2007 by then intern Clockwork, who is responsible for creating some of the most recognized limited items on the catalog, like Valkyrie Helm and Clockwork's headphones and shades. It was sort of a passion project for him because he apparently loved teapots, and its price was set at 1,337 Robux, which was a pretty hefty sum of money back then. It remained on sale until at least 2009, until it was eventually made off sale, except for during Labor Day of 2014 and Black Friday of 2017, when it was brought back for a short time and priced at 13,000. 337 Robux. Several items have also been made over the years that have referenced this hat in some way, and it's acclaimed as a top-tier classic hat to this day, which gives it a substantial amount of recognizability. Appearance-wise, it's just a simple pink teapot, and there's really nothing more to it than that. But its simplicity does mean that it fits quite easily into a ton of different classic outfits. Now, there isn't exactly a huge push from the community to get this thing limited right now, and its rarity isn't great, but I have a feeling that a lot of these 1,000 copies are either deleted or in old inactive accounts, and if this hat were to go limited, I'm sure the trading community would be hyped for it. So considering that and its history, I'd say that this hat definitely deserves a second life as a limited item. Another classic that deserves a mention is ASCII White. This thing was made in 2009, and I don't know what the admins were on when they were setting the price for it, but they somehow came to the conclusion that it was worth 6,000 Robux, which back in 2009 was worth around triple what it is now. As a result, for a short time, this hat became THE hat to own if you wanted to flex your wealth. According to one trader, back when it was still on sale, every trader wanted it even though no one could afford it. Leaving it with an impressively low owner count of just 360. There is actually a substantial amount of people that want it to go limited, and while it's nothing special appearance-wise, it does still look decent and not like any kind of popular franchise whatsoever. It's not very recognizable outside communities of older users and traders, but I have a feeling that its rarity combined with the fans that it does have would be enough to make it succeed. My next pick is not actually an item at all. It's three of them. I placed them all at the same level of deservingness because they all have relatively similar histories and fan bases. These are Rainbow Mr. Tentacles, Cultured Cousin Tentacles, and Great Uncle tentacles. The members of the Mr. Tentacles series were usually sold during various sales for just a few hours, and despite looking unassuming, their prices were really steep. Rainbow Mr. Tentacles and Cultured Cousin Tentacles were both sold for 9,001 Robux in reference to the over 9,000 meme, and Great Uncle Tentacles was sold for 5,000 Robux. The high price and low sale time meant high levels of rarity for all three of these hats. Great Uncle Tentacles sold 536 times, Rainbow Mr. Tentacles sold 341 times, and Cultured Cousin Tentacles sold just 45 times, most likely because it doesn't even look like a member of the series. As Robux inflation happened and they became easier to afford, more and more people have bought the on-sale variants of the series, Mr. Tentacles and Cousin Tentacles, and as a result, they're slowly becoming known as stylish hats, leading to a resurgence in their popularity. So if any of these three hats were to go limited, I believe it would rival Dr. Ishmael in no time. Next up is a set of items that most of you have probably never heard of before. These are the Royal Agate Egg of Beautiful Dreams and the Arborist's Verdant Egg of Leafiness. Now I know what you're probably thinking, but Nitra, why would you want an egg to go limited? Eggs are the worst kind of limited, everyone hates them. And yes, that is true for the egg hunt eggs with around 10k owners each, but what if I told you that these eggs did not come from an egg hunt at all? In fact, these eggs were actually prizes in a 48 hour contest wherein users were asked to build Roblox an updated version of the classic Crossroads map, which Roblox then rated from 0 to 9999. The builder was then awarded prizes in the form of avatar items based on what rating their map got. Because this contest took place so close to Easter, they decided to make all the prizes special egg hats. The agate egg was awarded for getting a rating of 1900 or higher, and the Verdant Egg was awarded for getting a rating of 1650 or higher. Now, looking at the old contest leaders page, you would think that both of these would have been easy to achieve, but the drops in ratings must have gotten particularly steep after this first 20, because multiple sources have confirmed that the Verdant Egg has anywhere from 200 to 70 owners, and the Agate Egg has anywhere from 100 to just 30. That's not a lot. The eggs are pretty unknown, but if one of them has even close to 30 owners, it would do extremely well, and their legacy as the rarest of the Egg Hats should not go unrecognized. Plus, they just look really cool. If you're in the trading community, you may have heard of the Real Flaming Hot and Real Ice Cold Stunners. These are both rare limiteds with decent amounts of value and respect within the community. But did you know that there was actually a third variation of these that never went limited? The Real Electric Stunners is a face accessory sold in the 2018 Memorial Day sale for 20,000 Robux. And because the Stunners series is relatively unknown outside the trading community, it only sold 51 times. Ever since its release, there's been a pretty significant push amongst its owners to get it limited, because without a limited status, I don't think anyone would guess that they 
ever cost 20k. However, they do look pretty cool, especially with that faint lightning texture in the lenses and the intimidating spikiness of the bolts. Overall, although it doesn't have a lot of history, I think the sheer cost of this thing and the fact that both of its other variations are already limited means that it's high time to give it a chance. Have you ever wanted to flex all your wealth in an absurdly obnoxious way that involves a giant cylinder of gold that's nearly as big as your head hanging around your neck? Well, you can't, because the ultimate Roebling necklace hasn't been on sale since 2017. But if you have, then this accessory is for you. The only problem other than it not being on sale anymore is that whenever it did go on sale, the time that it would be on sale for was infamously short. The first time it ever sold, it was 10,000 Robux, and it was only up for 12 minutes. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. You could have spent months saving up for this thing, waited all day on the day it was supposed to come out, gone to the kitchen for a quick lunch break, and come back having missed its entire sale period. This thing was coveted. During its later releases, its sale window was increased to 30 minutes, but that's still not a lot, especially considering that when that happened, the price was increased to 20,000 Robux. Although it's not that well known anymore, and it was clearly a bit rushed, it was a heavy hitter during sales, and seeing it go limited would put a smile on any veteran Robloxian's face. Plus, it only has 235 owners, so it would be extremely successful. Yeah. I did tell you it was hard to buy this thing. Up next is the Fire Crown. If you feel like you recognize this thing, it's probably because you've heard of the historic Ice Crown hat, which I've actually made a video about if you'd like to check that out. The Ice Crown is an extremely valuable and rare limited hat from 2008, but ironically, the Fire Crown, which was just a clever remesh cranked out for a random sale in 2016, is even rarer, with just 81 copies, which might be for a reason. The Fire Crown is a lot stouter and curvier than its inspiration, meaning that it's not as intimidating and powerful looking. It's not ugly, but it's not particularly good looking either, and considering its 25k robux price, it might have made sense to have passed it up back then if you didn't know the ice crown existed. Now that it's been a few years though, it's made a big resurgence in the trading community, and lots of people want it to go limited if for nothing else than to validate that 25k robux purchase they made. Considering that and its rarity, I think it would be very cool to see this hit the limited catalog. Now I'm gonna throw out a bit of a curveball, because believe it or not, this item is actually still on sale. This is the Summer Valk, and it currently sells for 25k robux, which is half the price of the only other on-sale Valkyrie Helm variation, the Violet Valkyrie. One can only assume that that would mean it has twice the number of owners that Violet Valkyrie has, but the last time it was checked, its owner count was just 144. Now we can't really pinpoint exactly why it's gone on so long with so few purchases, because it could be a variety of different reasons. Maybe it's the fact that whoever made it didn't bother to hollow out a hole for its head, maybe it's the complete lack of any sort of color scheme whatsoever, or maybe it's the fact that it doesn't even look like a real Valkyrie Helm. People just can't decide what to hate about it the most. Anyway, this hat is probably the newest one on this list. It was first sold in the 2019 Labor Day sale, and Roblox basically just didn't take it off sale. This was a huge blow to a lot of people, because the only reason anyone bought it in the first place was because they thought it would go limited, and they would make a profit, which never happened. Roblox let down a lot of people here, and they need to correct their actions and make this thing limited before people realize how rare it is, and we start seeing avatars like this everywhere. Now we're getting interesting. My next pick is another series of items, all inspired by Clockworks headphones and shades. During an event in 2015, the top 100 grossing DevX users were automatically awarded a random present hat, which at the end of December caused them to automatically receive the Adorite, Sparkle Time, Bombastic, or Wanwood Clockwork Shades, and they could also be purchased for 25k Robux each. Meanwhile, during a 2017 sale, the Clockwork Heartphones sold for 10,000 Robux, and during a 2018 sale, the Blue Clockwork Headphones sold for 10,000 Robux. Now it may seem like the shades were much harder to obtain and should be on a higher tier than the Clockwork Headphones, but I have a feeling that history doesn't matter that much in this situation, because at the end of the day, they're all Clockwork retail textures, and everyone would most likely be fighting tooth and nail to get a set of them no matter what their history and rarity was if they went limited. My personal favorite is the Adorite Clockwork Shades, for obvious reasons, but considering how close each of these items' rarities are to each other, they would most likely all do just as well as each other as limiteds. Continuing our descent into the depths of popular item retextures and remeshes, we have three items from the Blue Steel Texture series. First is the Blue Steel Antlers. These were one of the Wanwood Antlers retextures that were frequently sold in sales, and they were always the most expensive pair, at a whopping 20k Robux. They sold 459 times, which is pretty impressively low considering how many times they were put on sale. Then there's the Tasteless Blue Steel Shades, which are a retexture of one of the strangest limiteds ever made. The original Tasteless Shades sold with just 100 original copies, but each one was priced at a measly 10 Robux. Nowadays, they're valued at 900k and have been traded for items such as the Sparkle Time Vidora and the Void Star, which is a pretty significant profit margin. The Tasteless Blue Steel
Steel Shades, however, were priced at 5,000 Robux, and yet somehow sold less than the Blue Steel Antlers, with just 238 owners. The king of this set, however, is the Blue Steel Horns of Ponage, which were part of an Easter event where various egg basket gears were published to the catalog for various amounts of Robux and opened on Easter to reveal exclusive items. The Blue Steel Horns of Ponage's basket sold for 25,000 Robux, and I'm guessing people didn't really have a lot of faith that it would turn into anything worth owning because it only sold 82 times. However, everyone who passed this thing up was dead wrong, because it turned out to be a member of the Flaming Horn series. That's right, this thing has a yellow fire effect in the middle of it, and it's the perfect centerpiece to any Blue Steel outfit. So are the Blue Steel Tasteless Shades and the Blue Steel Antlers, though, so any of these accessories would be prime candidates for limiteds. Before considering those items, though, Roblox should take a look at a different series, the Dusikar series. The history of the original Dusikar goes all the way back to 2008, when it was made by Shedletsky for his co-worker Matt Dusek to honor his contributions to Roblox. For three years, Matt Dusek and Shedletsky were its only owners, but during a 2011 event, it became available to the public as an award for buying the Silver Gift of Surprise hat for 10,000 Robux or receiving it as a reward for being a Roblox admin. Two years later, in 2013, a retexture of it called the Doomsicar was uploaded and awarded for buying the Big Bootiful Gift of Destiny for 31,000 Robux. Two years after that, in 2015, another 31,000 Robux gift called the Classic Gift of Timeless Taste was uploaded, and it awarded anyone who bought it the Sparkle Time Classic Pumpkin, which was basically a Dusikar remesh without the antlers. It wasn't the first antlerless remesh of the Dusikar to ever exist, but it, along with the Dusikar and the Doomsicar, was special because it contained special effects. The Dusikar and Doomsicar contain yellow and green fire, respectively, although the Dusikar's fire only works if Matt Dusek wears it. And the Sparkle Time Pumpkin Head contained dynamic lighting and ghost particles. Awarding classic-looking pumpkin heads used to be a well-loved Halloween tradition, and it would be nice if this Halloween, Roblox could keep that tradition alive by making one or all of the hats I just listed limited. Please do it, Roblox, I don't want to have to haunt you. Up next are the items inspired by the agonizingly ugly bucket of doom, which there's a lot of. There's the agonizingly green and agonizingly violet buckets of cheer, which both sold in December of 2016 for 25,000 Robux, and the agonizingly blue bucket of doom, which was awarded as part of the 2014 Easter basket event and whose basket could have been purchased for 25,000 Robux. They were all purchased roughly 100 times, and they all give off major classic vibes. Each one of them has a pretty significant fanbase behind it that wants it to go limited, especially the cheer buckets, because those were a total scam. You see, there were actually three buckets of cheer that went on sale during 2016, all for the same price, green, violet, and red. After a short time, all three of those buckets went off sale, and most of their owners were able to accept that. Even though the buckets weren't limited, their looks were good enough to still make it a flex to wear them, and everything turned out okay. However, during the 2019 President's Day sale, Roblox decided to bring the red cheer bucket back on sale, and then afterwards, promptly make it limited, while failing to even acknowledge the existence of the other two cheer buckets whatsoever. Now, the owners of the red cheer bucket get to sit back and enjoy a 105k profit, while the owners of the other two get nothing, just because of the color of their item. So if we didn't already have enough reasons to cancel Roblox Corp, there's another one right there. And I would say that's the biggest Doom Bucket related scam Roblox has ever peddled, but I would be wrong, because we haven't even discussed my next pick for this list yet, the agonizingly white bucket of Doom. The reason why I placed this higher than the other other Doom Buckets is that this one was double their price, and an astonishing 50k Robux. 50k Robux. 50k Robux. For that kind of money, you could chop off your head and still have enough left over for a leg amputation. We're talking big money here. This thing had all possible signs of being a future limited item. It was released during a sale with a purchase window of 18 hours for an incredibly high price, and it's even a retexture of a popular item that's already limited. However, after that 18 hours was over, it just went off sale. No limited status, just 160 people with negative 50k Robux and a mediocre looking Doom Bucket retexture for no reason. It's high time all those owners received a return on investment because right now, the only positive to their situation is that at least they didn't go for the Violet Valkyrie. Now, if you thought that was rough, let me introduce you to an item called the Red Void Star. This may be the most insane looking item I've ever seen. If Guest666 was a traitor, this would be his signature hat. Combined with its description, it doesn't even look like a real hat. It looks like it was uploaded to Roblox by a hacker or something. Fortunately, no hacking was necessary to get this hat. You just needed to give up a cool 50k Robux for it. It was on sale for that much during the 2017 Black Friday sale, and it only sold for two hours, but after that sale period, it was the same situation as the white doom bucket. Nothing happened. I do think Roblox really needs to make it limited, but not because its owners regret their purchase, because this hat is so cool that I have a feeling that they would be happy to own it regardless of how much money they lost. Roblox needs to make it limited because so many people want this item. It's not just me that thinks this item is insane, nearly every person in the trading community who knows about this hat would give their left foot for it. Couple that with its minuscule owner count, and this thing would most likely surpass the value of the original voice 
Void Star in a matter of days. Making this hat limited would be one of the best decisions Roblox could make, and they need to get on that. But it wouldn't be the absolute best limited that they could feasibly release. It's close, but there's one more item that would cause even more of a stir as limited, and that's the Dominus Potassium, and also a bunch of other Tix merch as well. Specifically, the Tix Bling, Lord of the Tix Ration, Tix Shaggy, Tix Domino Crown, Eccentric Tix Fan, Tix Wings, and Tix Swag Monocle. You're probably wondering why so many Tix themed retextures of rare and valuable limiteds exist on the catalog, and while I've actually made a whole video on the subject in the past that you can watch to find out, I'll still give you a basic summary. In 2016, Roblox's only free to earn currency, Tix, was discontinued, and as a send off to the currency, Roblox hosted an event called Tixapalooza. For each of the 30 30 days before Tix disappeared, they released a new Tix themed item that could only be bought with Tix. Each day, the price of the new item would get lower and lower, but the items released during the first few days were stupidly expensive. Tix to Robux rates were always fluctuating, but the average rate was usually 10 Tix to 1 Robux. By that rate, the Tix swag monocle alone was worth 20k Robux, and the Dominus Potassium was worth the very affordable price of 500k Robux. I'm not even gonna do the bit where I say the price three times for this one. It's not even necessary. Do you realize how many Crimson Shaggy 2.0s you could buy with that kind of money? A lot. It is absolutely insane that Roblox still hasn't made even one of these items limited yet, especially considering their original prices. And when you look at how rare they are, it's obvious that these would pull serious numbers. I would even bet money that at least one of them would go for 10 million within the month. Plus, making some of these limited would show that Roblox still honors and respects its history, including free to earn currency. All in all, any one of these items would make for one of, if not the best limited drops that Roblox has conducted to date. Make it happen, guys. If by some miracle someone involved with Roblox's catalog department is watching right now, I really hope you take this advice to heart. Each item featured in this video is relatively historic, good looking, rare, recognizable, and loved by the community, and they all truly deserve to be limited. I don't claim to speak for every Roblox scene because obviously everyone's taste in Roblox items is different. I'm simply using facts, logic, and the bits of conversation I've picked up from various trading communities to list out what would objectively be the best items that you can make limited, and I urge you to at least give a few of them a shot and see if I'm correct. I have a feeling that you'll be pleasantly surprised. That's about it. I've been Lord Nitrous, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!